This is Fisherman's Village broadcast happy hour, and we're here at the Shack Arts Center in downtown Everett. This is brought to you by Tito Vodka and Elysian Brewing. My name's Eva Walker, and I'm sitting here with Claudine Magbag, whose name I just love. <laughs> how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good. Thanks for chatting with me, and thanks for that amazing performance. Thanks for having you, me. By I mean, the way. it's wild, like, doing a festival here, like, in your hometown, I guess, and, like, everything being that. You're from Everett. Yeah, well, I mean, I live, like, a little bit north of here, but, like, this is where I grew up, so. Nice, I actually didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So, one of the things that I found when I was looking you up and researching you was this quote, which was, a woman needs a room of her own if she is to realize her creative potential. I thought that was a pretty amazing Thanks. statement. Can you elaborate more on that? Um, I think to me, like, you know, when I'm creating and stuff, like I've always found that like, um, like a lot of people love to have like all this like fancy equipment and stuff and like all these tools to like help their creative process like flow. But I've always found that like, when I'm, you know, creating, I've always, Sorry, um, I've always found that like being in my own space has been the most effective and I've done like the best work like in my room like you know late at night where like I feel safe um, and familiar with to kind of just really be able to like you know show my heart on my sleeve um, in my work and stuff so I think that's kind of like what I meant. Yeah. yeah that's awesome and I feel like that's more common um, with a lot of artists. I mean, I, myself, I do that. Uh, I was talking to Travis Thompson about that, and mm. he was talking about just like recording into his computer so no one can hear him, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then suddenly going to a concert and like 1900 people are singing the words of the song. Yeah. I feel like that's a common thing. Um, and uh, a lot of artists can relate to that. Yeah. And so I also wanted to ask, what are your um, non-music influences in your music? Um. That's a tough question. Non-music influences in my music. Um, just like day-to-day -day life, um, like real experiences, just like the little things that we all go through that like not a lot of people want to talk about in music. I think a lot of people, at least now, like when I hear everything, I just feel like there's not a lot of depth in music. Um, but to really like sit down um, and just like think about like your day or just like how these past few months like have affected you and to kind of translate that into music um like what affects it the most like personal relationships like whether it's like actually relationships or like friendships or just like work um struggles um just like good days and all that and how they all kind of just go hand in hand with each other so yeah yeah just yeah. life yeah, it's just life experiences. Yeah, totally. And you did the sound off competition. Yeah. Um, how was that for you? And what's kind of been the the path since sound off? How's that helped you? Oh, um, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Um, when I had submitted my application for that, like I had no idea what it was. I kind of just thought <laughs> it was like a fun like Mopop thing. Like I didn't know it was like an actual like competition or something. So like, uh, you know, being like a kid from Everett and stuff, like it's kind of a big deal, like going down to Seattle. It's not like that for me anymore, but like, like you just go into like an elevator and you're like, okay, that looks cool. Like, I guess I'll like <laughs> do it. And then like, I actually got a call back from like Robert, um, who works at Mopop, that's in charge of the whole thing. He was like, we really like your music. Like, we would love for you to do it. And I was like, yeah. And then I didn't realize like, it would be like a whole set, like this whole thing. I'd be competing against like real bands and stuff. People who have like done gigs like all over Seattle and everything. And I was like, oh, like, shoot. <laughs> like, that was the first time that I'd ever done like um, a set, like in front of people. Like, you know, I'm used really? to Really? Like, yeah, that was so like. The sound off competition was the first time you did a set. Yeah, like I did like a first, my first show wow. or anything like that. So. That's amazing. Thanks. Yeah, it was like <laughs> super, and intimidating. It was really <laughs> stressful. Yeah, I mean, like just like meeting everybody and like everybody kind of has like a good idea of, like what they do, like who they are, like musically. And I think like for me, it was like kind of the opposite. I had no idea like what I was doing. Um, and I would say like it really put me on like a crazy like pathway because if it weren't for that, like I probably wouldn't have stuck around uh, like Seattle and stuff like that. I probably just like would have went off to college and stuff like that. Um, like everybody else was doing, like people my age, um, and it's helped me build like a lot of like relationships. I probably wouldn't be here today, like doing that. Um, I wouldn't have like any of my like music friends or anything like that, and I'm super like thankful for that. So, 
yeah. Looking back, I feel like I would have waited longer, but mm -hmm. I mean, if I had waited longer, I probably wouldn't be here, so yeah. Yeah, and we're glad you're here. Yeah. I was just talking with Alex Cade, um, and yeah, he also did sound off. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was asking him if he was still connected with any of the other um, folks that were, that participated. Yeah. Do you have like, did you make some like real connections and sound off anyone that you're still in, in touch with now? Um, yeah, like a few people. Um, well, I know uh, Laze, like she used to be like misunderstood and stuff. Like her friend, like James or whatever, like we're still in touch and just like a bunch of people. Um, like from Oregon that were doing it like my year and stuff, uh, like my win and like Dreadlight, um, that makes some really like good stuff and things like that. And just like always just keeping in touch, like on Instagram and everything. Yeah. So and just a lot of people like behind that that didn't do sound off, but like people who know like other people that like I make music with now or just like friends that like did it like the year after or like meeting people who did it before me and becoming friends with them. So Yeah. Yeah. I know it's I've been hearing more that it's just this community. It's not that you're just connected to the year you competed in, but mm -hmm. you've kind of become connected with the alumni and people who are maybe are, that are gonna join it after you or yeah. who did it years ago. And it's yeah. this amazing community that Sound Off forms. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, the first time I saw you perform, the first time I heard of you was through um, Austin. Mm -hmm. And uh, he sent me your music, which everything he sends me is incredible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, loved it, have played it on Audio Oasis. And, um, and then the first time I saw you perform was at the refill uh -huh. benefit. Um, how was that? That was like an all-star lineup. How did you get connected with that? Um, yeah, that was an all-star lineup. Um, actually, Which includes you. Uh, yeah, the all-star. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, like, uh, I'm friends with Ben Zadie. Um, so yeah. him and Soul were doing it. Um, and he reached out and he was like, hey, do you want to do like this kind of... Um, benefit like concert like live stream and everything like kind of thing because obviously like live music isn't really a thing anymore and like COVID and stuff so he reached out um and he gave me some like you know kind of like a timeline and everything and I was totally down to do it um it was like my first time I've ever done like anything like that before and I'm always down to try new things and it was for like a really really good cause so yeah that's kind of how it happened yeah and awesome. I reached out to Elon at Ruby Room and wanted to try something new, you know. And I was reading your interview um, that you did for Sound Off with Mopop, uh -huh. and um, something that seems common amongst artists uh, with their music as far as a goal, one of their goals um, is to be able to connect with people or to connect with someone. Yeah. And um, I read that, that that was something that you're interested in doing with your own music. Um, and that being a common thing amongst artists that I've noticed, why is that important specifically to you to be able to connect someone um, through well, your music? I think a big part of connection is also just like storytelling. I love storytelling and just like also like as a listener and as a kid who like always just like love to consume music and just like be in like a whole different world. I always like, I think I always just enjoyed music that I felt like that made me feel something or that I felt like connected to. Um, yeah, I definitely gravitate to more like slower music um, compared to like, I don't know, more like fast music and stuff like that. So, sorry, what was the question? <laughs> no, you, you <laughs> got it. Yeah, uh, why not have your yeah, why is it important for you to connect with someone? And, yeah. and you mentioned storytelling. Yeah. And, and I think that's, that's a great answer. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I was reading about you describing your music and one of the questions were um, what two emojis would you use to describe oh your God. music and <laughs> one was the one I, I don't know what to call the face but the face that's just kind of like straight yeah it's just kind of straightforward like like this yeah. I'm doing the this yeah. is the meme, this yeah. Is the meme. <laughs> yeah, um, and ago. then the other one was the sad face yeah. one and listening to your music and honestly listening to you describe it I feel like people, some people, and, and it's not to speak for anyone, but just kind of what I'm thinking, personal opinion. Mm -hmm. um, people might get a sense that um, it's there's it's it's melancholy, yeah. you know, and and that um, that that's the best description I could say. That I feel that some people might 
get from hearing your music and kind of um, reading how you sort of describe it, it being sort of, um, as you said, sad sounding and yeah. it's not very like energetic. Or, but melancholy, I feel like that description lacks depth. Yeah. And your woman, yeah. person of color, and I feel like there's depth to your music and describing it as melancholy to me would be lazy. Yeah. Um, and so I wanted to know your like your thoughts on that, the, the deeper meaning behind your music. Because I know it's not just sad and low energetic. Yeah. yeah. There's more to it than that, especially me and you living yeah. in a society. Yeah, yeah. That I know there's more depth to it than just being Sad. Melancholy, and I just kind of wanted you to elaborate on some of the deeper meanings in your um, songs, yeah, in your writing. Um, I would definitely say like a common theme, I guess, would be like just constantly feeling like out of place, um, and just like struggling how to like deal with that, like figuring out like not only being like a woman but also being like a person of color, just like figuring out like how to fit into a space or just like walk into a room and like handle feeling out of place. Um, I think that kind of ties to like the melancholy thing. It's like something I have to sit and like think about. I'm sorry, but it's hard. Yeah, to no, about. it's all it's all good. I and just recognizing that yes, there's more depth to that than just labeling it as melancholy. Like, which just and and you can say that about most artists because we all have these individual experiences yeah. that are just way more than that that go deeper than that. Yeah. Um, but I appreciate what you do uh -huh. and how you embrace that. Um, I don't know if enough artists do do that. Yeah. Um, so it's just kind of acknowledging that um, your presentation uh -huh. of your music. And I think that's it's awesome how you do it. Um, and uh, kind of to wrap everything up, like how are you doing in, you know, COVID era? And how are you liking or disliking this kind of new way of performing? Uh -huh. um, Virtually, yeah. I know some artists love it or they're like, yeah, it's fine. Some uh -huh. artists hate it. Yeah. <laughs> um, how are you kind of dealing with that with them? Um, I don't know. I'm not gonna lie. Like it's a little stressful because um, I feel like timelines are just like a little bit like more strict, you know, with like having to get everything done for like a live broadcast and stuff. And something about like being in front of a camera can be really, really hard sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, but I think with COVID and just like watching the whole world kind of stop and slow down it makes you kind of just think about things um and like what is like the new normal and like just like the things that were normal just thinking about like what you want to return to and like what you don't want to return to um and i like some people like i don't really enjoy like the isolation it was tough like sometimes mm -hmm. um really just being like in full on isolation and only being able to go to the grocery store and just like being stressful about that. But I'm very thankful for that time to kind of just like stay in one place and like stay in my room and kind of just sit and like look about, like look at um, how I'm feeling and like what I'm going through um, and being able to channel that into music to just like stop and slow down because I think that was something that I really needed um, to do. Um, and there are a lot more, I guess, ideas that are coming from it that I'm really excited to finish. Um, and I'm not gonna lie, shows kind of give me like anxiety. I think um, I like the creative process, uh, mm -hmm. making music, the creative process of making music a lot better than, um, I guess, performing it. So, yeah. I'm just yeah. like that. <laughs> and you have a collaborator, someone that plays guitar. Do you all um, write a lot of this to this stuff together? Um, Elon? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we made the Lost EP together, the hometown one that I performed. Uh, we, I think I wrote that like a little over a year ago. Um, we do like a lot of shows together. Um, we haven't worked together in like a little bit mm -hmm. um, as far as like creating just because he's busy and stuff. But I've been like working on some stuff on my own and then I kind of just pick from there like what producer would kind of um, trend or like interpret the idea. Uh, I've been working with Budo. I don't know if you ever. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, he's worked with Ben Zadie before. Yeah. Um, I've got like a couple of songs I'm really looking nice. forward to releasing. And then I did an unreleased song um, on the set. Uh, and Seth produced that, so awesome. just looking to work with everybody. Like, yeah, just find my sound. And to follow up on that statement, is there anything 
next that's any releases coming up? Uh, yeah. Um, so speaking of Budo, uh, I've got a single coming out um, on October 16th. It's called Drive. So yeah, it's a little different, but I don't know. I think a lot of people will enjoy it. So yeah. Nice. October 16th, Drive. Yeah. Is that yeah. going to be a full length, an EP? Um, it's just a single. Single? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you, Claudine Magbag, for joining me and for performing. You are amazing. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, incredible. Uh, keep an ear out for Drive, the single that's going to be released October 16th. Thank you again. Oh, thanks for having <laughs> me.